Hey everyone, Suja asked me how to put LaTeX graphs together, so I thought I'd record a quick video. I've also got this template, which you can uh, just use, but uh, I feel it's better if I explain what's going on in this. So in my preamble here, the key package will be PGF plots. All right, so what I suggest, if you want to use this, you would at least be uh, downloading this code here and putting it into your preamble but probably yeah make sure it, it includes all of this stuff to be on the safe side um i've got uh, my title here and my author and the uh the date so that's all good and then let's just jump into it so what do we have here we've got all of the this stuff up here naturally enough and then my awesome graph is shown in figure one my awesome graph is shown in figure one well as you can see there's no graph there at this point in time there's just a caption so how do we put in the graph i was thinking because our uh, assignment is about surge functions uh, amongst other things let's do a surge function so in we've opened up a figure environment in the usual way that we always do and we're going to begin a ticks picture environment and you can see that it changes color at least when you're using tech maker you might be using a different system um, like that. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't auto close my environment, so I've got to manually end ticks picture as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use an access environment inside the ticks picture environment. And again, it's not going to auto complete, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. So what do we have? Figure environment in that there's a ticks picture environment in that there's an access environment. And now we've just got to define our axes and uh, kind of set them up. So I've got a style that I like for my axes and I've defined that up here. And this of course is in my preamble. And it just says, look, I want my axis lines to be such and such. I want the arrows to be such and such. I want the size and everything to be such and such. I've done all the heavy lifting for you there. So all you've got to do is open a square bracket like so jump down here, tab over, and we're going to use my axis style. That's what I've defined. All right, and we'll come down and we'll close our square bracket now. And there we go. So we're all configured and good to go. Now we've actually got to put in our plot. And what I'm thinking is I would like to graph f of x equals x e to the minus x, because that's a nice surge function. So I'm going to add plot. And again, I need to just put the options <clears throat> on my plot first. So I open a square bracket. What options would I like? Well, I'm thinking probably a good domain would be something like zero to five. So I'm going to put domain equals uh, zero colon five. You can play around with that. Might want to go out to positive 10 maybe on your domain. Depends. Um, what else would I like? I'd like when I draw this graph I would like it to be nice and thick so it's easy to see on the page so I use the thick op option and is there anything else oh yeah because I just want a single uh, ended arrow here because you think about a surge function it's starting at the origin so it's not going backwards if you wanted arrowheads on both ends of your graph you would use that if you just want to end uh, an arrow on the far end you would use that option there that should be enough for now. So I've finished my options for my plot. So I'm going to close my square bracket there. And then I'll come down here. And in curly brackets, I'm going to say the thing that I actually want to plot now. So, you know, if I just put X there, uh, it would graph the identity function. But that's not what I want. I want X times E to the minus X. So it's uh, um, an asterisk there x asterisk and then i want the exponential so i want exp and what is it the exponential of it's the exponential of minus x so that reads x times e to the minus x you'll have real difficulties if you don't put a semicolon here it's really going to trip up latex big time so you've got to make sure that you put that semicolon there uh, and let's compile see what we've got and hey, that's not so bad that looks pretty much like a surge function to me. Uh, so 
you know, let's play around with a few things. Maybe we do want uh, a bigger domain. That's going to get more of that sort of tail happening. I think we're too close to the axis there for comfort. So maybe five is okay, but you go with what suits you best. Uh, what else? Well, I'm just looking at this. I think it's a little bit narrow, not the domain I'm talking about, but the actual width of the graph itself. So I might come down here and say, um, when I'm defining my axis, I want the width to be equal to, let's say the text width, maybe. So we'll compile that. Yeah, now it's wider, but it's way too tall, I'm finding. So maybe I want the height to be equal to, I don't know, 0.5 of the text width, let's say. And between all of these options, of course, I've got to put some commas, otherwise it's going to throw up an error. Yeah, that's kind of good. The other thing you can do is you can do it in terms of inches, maybe. So I want it to be a height of uh, 3.5 inches. That's also fine. Or centimeters or pickers or pixels. Or There's many different ways of skinning the cat in LaTeX. But I'm just going to go in multiples of, or in proportion to the text width. So what, 0.5? of the text width seems to work all right so we've got in one graph there uh, what else can we do um let's put in another one so suppose we wanted to put in another one maybe we'll, we want to put in two times e to the minus x i'll just copy my code because i don't want to reinvent the wheel here i want the same domain uh, i want it to be thick i want a single arrowhead but this time I want two asterisks, x e to the minus x. Okay, so there's that one. That's all well and good. Um, it's a bit hard to tell them apart though, isn't it? So you might want to say, let's put this one in red. Okay, that's going to be a bit clearer now. Um, you know, we'll be able to distinguish between them a little bit easier. Let's put in one more for good measure because we're on a bit of a roll here. so, And you can see that with LaTeX, once you've done the heavy lifting the first time, all the rest comes really quickly. You can quickly bang out lots and lots of stuff here because you've written the code already. So this, this one I want to be blue, not red. Now, for, to my eyes, I, I actually see my blues and blacks pretty similar. That might look quite distinct to you, um, but yeah. Okay, so that's that's looking good so far. What else might we want? We might want a bit of um, a uh, legend up the top to say which is which. So up here, when we're defining our axes, we could drop down and we could say uh, we want a legend entry. Um, legend entries, rather. Now, what are those going to be equal to? Well. I'm going to go equals curly bracket and I'll drop down here because there's three things I want to put in here. So I've got to put them in curly brackets to make sure that I've got all of those included. What are my legend entries? Well, the first one is, the first one that I put in was y equals x e to the minus x. Right? So I compile that. And now we've got a... a you know, our first legend entry there. It's not ideal though, because if you zoom in on that E, can you see it's in italic type, which is not appropriate because it's not a variable. So uh, that needs to be in Roman type. So I've got a macro up here, um, which is you can include in your document if you want. So I've set up this Thing so that whenever I go forward slash capital E, I'm going to typeset a Roman E in the math environment. So that's the best way to do that. Subtle thing. Maths is all about subtle things. Okay, so now I've got a Roman E there. Okay, uh, what else? I need some other ones. So I'll go comma. And I'll just copy my code, of course. I'm trying to save time. 
an energy. What was the next one? It was 2xe to the minus x. So we'll just compile that. Thankfully, that's come in red, so we know which is which. And then one more. The next one is 0.5. Uh, which I wouldn't write that way. When I'm doing my code, I would write it that way. But when I'm writing it for human consumption, I would write with a leading zero. So that's that. Another thing you can think about doing, and you can mix these strategies up if you want. To really make a distinction, you could say, oh yeah, I want that one in red, but I also want it dashed. Because again, it would just be that little bit clearer to see, you know, that that one's that one and you can see that it's changed up here as well and then you might want this one to be dash dotted maybe and if you want to find other options go searching on google and you'll find plenty of different options that you have available so those are looking looking quite distinct now i'm liking it what else can we do well because we're trying to find the uh local max here in where it turns out being a global max, I guess, but because we want to find this local max here, um, we might want to put a little point there and say that's where it is. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we've got to find where it's located. So I've plotted a search function. Now, this one's a bit dodgy because it's going beneath the x-axis, which, of course, is not appropriate, but I'm, I'm not worrying because all I'm trying to do is find the, the maximum here. But you wouldn't put that in your report, of course. Um, so we're trying to find the maximum of this function f from, say, 0 to 10 or something in that interval. And there it is. So to five significant figures, it looks like it's 0.36788 for the y-coordinate there. So that's going to be useful information. So I'll come down here. And I'm going to fill. And this fill is going to be black this time because I'm going to match it up with my black graph. And what are the details? Well, I need to give the coordinates of, of the point that I'm trying to fill him. So the x coordinate is 1, and the y coordinate is 0 0.36788. 0.36788. Now, what do I actually want there? I want a circle. It's going to be this little tiny circle. I'm going to make it two point wide, but you can play around with that and, and see what suits you best. I think two points is probably going to be appropriate. And again, really, really important that you put that uh, semicolon there. It's absolutely going to hate you if you don't put that there for some reason. I don't know why. And now we've got that point. Can you could repeat the dose. You could put the point up here on this one and the point on this one, but you would need to find the relevant coordinates. Uh, but it's not labeled right now, which is not so good. So let's put a node. Let's call that a node, right? And above that node, so I'm going to use square brackets. So I'm saying, look, above this node here, we're going to put the label. What's the label? Let's call it foo for the time being. There we go. So now we've labeled that. And that might be good for you. That might serve your purposes. Or you might prefer to have it to the right. Um, so let's put our label over there to the right. It's not so good, though, because it's butting up against the, um, the graph. So maybe a mix of those above right, perhaps, might be a good place. And then you might be saying, well, yeah, it's a little bit too large, maybe. So you could put it in tiny type if you wanted to by going like that, giving the tiny option. But you don't want to really do that. I think that's I think that's a little bit too extreme. One that I happen to like using quite a bit is footnote size. But you can look up all the size commands on Google and see what suits you best. Now, foo is not a real good label for that, so let's call it what it really is. So I'm going to use maths. So I'm going to use my dollar signs there. And what was it? It was one. A couple of ways you could go. You could approximate it. You could say 0.3. What was it again? 
788 might be okay but it's a little bit messy maybe my preference would probably be to say what it really is so if you do the calculus we found a stationary point on x e to the minus x right that's stationary when x equals one so what's y going to be it's going to be one times e to the minus one uh so it's one over e isn't it so you could just say instead i want one over e like that so there's the max and you could repeat the dice and find where the point of inflection is and you could label that up like so all right so that's probably enough to get started i wonder if there's anything that needs to be set apart from that probably that's okay i guess yeah if there's one other thing I, well there's a couple of other things just while i'm thinking about it but if you if there's something that you need me to discuss don't be shy to get in touch with me and i'll be able to help you with it here's one thing that you might want to consider doing this legend is great but i don't like where it is so what i'm going to do is i'm going to configure my access here and i'm going to say that the legend pause the legend position that is not the legend the legend position is what well that's going to be equal to say northeast let's say i want it up there in the northeast think about where the northeast is it's up there okay what we had before was the outer northeast so beyond the bounds of the axis so outer northeast would and that's what i've got it configured by default to be but you know in this case it might not be appropriate to have it there so northeast you could even try northwest i guess wonder if that's going to work no i don't like it it obscures this stuff so i, I would not do that that's for sure so you can play around with that and you can look up on google some of the other options that you have in a text picture environment i guess the other thing uh would be to just if you're not happy with this capital y and capital x for your axes labels okay so how how might you go about doing that you can put it anywhere my habits to put it around about this sort of um area so you could just say that the x label equals whatever you want it to be so you might want to have a little x or maybe we're using t's or something and uh, that might be you know suiting you better depending on what you've got normally x and y is pretty good but you can do that if you if you so desire okay so hopefully that's enough to get you started with text pictures